Hello everyone. Myself Dinesh and I am from Bandarkar's Arts and Science College Kundapur. Today I am going to deal with the topic chelating agents in medicines. Yes, medicines have great importance in this living world. We can't imagine the world without medicines. Since it has its own importance, it's really helpful to mankind. We are in the 21st century and we are quite developed in the sector of medicines. Most of all the diseases have vaccines. So, let's study about the topic chelating agents in medicine. In this session, we are going to study about what are chelating agents, how can we afford that, what are its role, what are the adverse effect on our health, and the main thing that is about the dosage. Well, heavy metal acts as general protoplasmic poison and impairs the cell function. Heavy metals is nothing but the metals with the relatively high densities or atomic weight or atomic number. An example for the heavy metals are mercury, lead, cadmium, etc. And the protoplasm is a colorless material that compresses the living part of the cell, including cytoplasm, nucleus, and other cell originals. And the protoplasmic poison means the substance or the material that can damage or kill the living cells. Hence, the activity or the function of the cell get reduces. And these heavy metals have the ability to form complexes with the important biological radicals like sulfhydryl hydroxyl, carboxyl, amino acids, etc. And these gelating agents have two or more electronegative groups that form stable coordinate covalent bond with a cationic metal atom which are present inside the cell and they form a stable metallic complex and the former stable metallic complex are excreted in the urine these are known as chelators thus appropriate agent can be effectively used in the case of heavy metal poison yes coming to chelating agents these chelating agents are the drug used to prevent heavy metal poisoning these compounds are usually flexible organic molecules which can incorporate metal ion into their molecular structure by means of chemical groups called ligands. So, through the ligands, the chelating agent will bind upon the metal atom and it will be removed from the cell. Chelating agents can be split into two words, keel and ligate. Keel means grasp claw. As we all know that a claw or a pincer can hold or grasp something. Like these, chelating agents will bind upon the metal atoms and helps to avoid the metal poisoning. These organic compounds combine with the metal to form a relatively stable and non-ionized ring complexes which are known as chelator and its whole process is known as chelation. And that form a stable metallic complex which are called as chelator will be excreted in the urine. Coming to its mechanism or how it works, I have told in the previous slide that the word chelating agent is derived from the Greek word called chel, which means crab's claw or pincers. Like the same way, these chelating agent will bind upon the metal ion and will remove from our body. These heavy metals present in our food, drug, etc. The chemical structure of these chelating agent acts like a hooks to bind with the metal ion. After binding with the metal ion, it will form a heterocyclic ring structure called chelate, which is non toxic and easily excreted. Thus, it reduces the propensity for oxidative reaction by removing the metal ions. Hence, once the chelating agent attaches to the metal ion, it will remove from our body in the form of a heterocyclic ring structure called chelate, which will excrete it through urine and it is also non toxic. Coming to the classification, the drug EDTA, ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid, is used against lead. The drug dimercaprol is used to remove arsenic, mercury, copper from our body. The drug succimer is used to remove arsenic, mercury from our body. And the drug penicillamine is used to remove copper, mercury, lead from our body. The drug triantin is used to remove copper from our body. And the drug defrifrone and the defroximine is used to remove iron from our body. Sulfur hydrolegans of dimercaprol compete with the 
sulfidyl groups of enzyme for heavy metals like arsenic, mercury and copper. It is used for the treatment of arsenic and mercury poisoning. As an adjuvant to penicillamine in copper poisoning and also it is used in meals and diseases. It has some adverse effect on our health like rise in BP, tachycardia, tingling and burning sensation, sweating, cramps, headache and anxiety. Dimercaprol forms a metal complex which is stable and excreted in the urine. And the dosage is 5 mg per kg followed by 2-3 mg per kg for or for 2 days. Yes, the next drug DMSA. Dimercaprol succinic acid or succima. It's a dimercaprol analog. It's a water soluble, less toxic and orally affected drug which is marketed in USA and some other countries not in India for the treatment of lead intoxication. It also has some adverse effects such as nausea, anorexia and loose motions. The dosage is 10 mg per kg for every 8 hours to 5 days. The next drug is DMPS, Dimer Capto 1 Propane Sulfonic Acid or Intio. It is a water soluble, less toxic and can be administered orally as well as IV. Used for the severe acute poisoning by mercury and arsenic and also in lead poison. The dosage is 3 to 5 mg per kg for every 4 hours for IV in 20 minutes. Adverse effects are low except for the mild self limited uteric area. And it is also dimer capital analog. Well, the next drug is calcium disodium ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. It is calcium chelator of disodium ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. It has high affinity for lead. Most important use is in lead poisoning and it is excreted by glomerular federation and tubular secretion. It has some adverse effects such as kidney damage with the proximal tubular necrosis, an acute febrile reaction with chills, body ache and malaise. The dosage of this drug is 50 to 75 mg per kg for days. The next drug is disodium ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. It is a disodium salt of ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid and is a potent chelator of calcium. It causes detainee on IV injection but not on slow infusion. It can be used for emergency control of hypercalcemia. And the dosage is 50 mg per kg through IV over 2 to 4 hours. And the next one is penicillamine. It is a water soluble degradation product of penicillin. D isomer is used since it is non toxic compared to L isomers and it is easily absorbed from gastrointestinal tract. It will be metabolized and excreted through urine or fecus. It has strong copper chelating property and was used in 1956 for wills and diseases. It is used in copper mercury alternate to dimer capital or dimer capital succinic acid poisoning. It is also used in cystinuria and crystal stones. It was used as a disease modifying drug in rheumatoid arthritis but now it was replaced by safer drugs. It produces pronounced toxicity such as desmetological, renal, hematological and collagen tissue toxicities. The dosage is 0.5 to 1 gram daily in divided doses. And penicillamine selectively chelates copper, mercury, lead and zinc. Well, the next drug is triantin, that is triethylene tetramine. It chelates copper and issued in Wilson disease, may be less toxic than penicillamine. However, in animal studies, it has been found to be teratogenic, means abnormal physiological development. And the next drug is desfloximide. Peroxamine obtained from actinomycetin, a long chain iron containing complex. One gram is capable of chelating 85 mg of elemental iron. However, it has low affinity for calcium, parenterally partly metabolized and rapidly excreted in urine, a chemical removal of iron from methyl desferoximide. It is used in acute iron poisoning, mostly in children. It is an important and life-saving. Also, it causes hypotensive shock due to histamine release, abdominal pain, muscle cramps, fever and dysuria. And the dosage is 10 to 15 mg per kg for hour of infusion. Last drug that is Defriflon. It is orally active used in transfusion sclerosis. It means it is the accumulation of iron in the liver and heart but also in the endocrine organ. 
in patients who received or did receive the frequent blood transfusion such as those with thalassemia, sickle cell diseases, leukemia, aplastic anemia, or myelodysplastic syndrome. Somewhat less effective alternative to injected desferoxamide. Side effects and also the cost of treatment is reduced. Also, it is indicated in iron poisoning, less effective than desferoxamide, and iron load in liver thyrosis. It has some adverse effects such as anorexia, omitting, altered taste, joint pain, reversible neutropenia, and rarely agronelocytosis. And dosage is 50 to 100 mg per kg. Yes, I have explained the chelating agent in medicines. The treatment of removing the metal ion by using the chelating agent is known as chelation therapy. The primary goals of chelation therapy are to reduce the metal retention and to decrease the morbidity and mortality. And there are some unsolved issues in chelation therapy. They are chelation of cadmium, chromium and platinum, chelation therapy in infants and combined chelation therapy.